Hi everybody. Today I'd like to continue with ideas from chapter 1. Chapter 1 was about how to find night folks which could be played right away. This chapter is about how to eliminate or distract defenders away from the poking square so that you can go ahead and plan your attack. In this position it's white's turn. If black's knight on e5 could be eliminated, white could play knight f7 check and pick up the rook. Also white cannot neglect black's threat of knight f3 check. Hence the best option for white is to play rook captures knight. Now black can either capture white's rook or knight. Rook captures knight loses to rook e8 checkmate. So black has to play f6 captures rook. Now since the defender of f7 has been eliminated, white can go ahead and play knight f7 check and win some material. Here again, it's white to play. White's queen could have delivered mate on f7 if black's knight hadn't been defending that square. However, white also has a knight fork on d7. So the idea should be to eliminate the defender of d7. This can easily be done by queen captures bishop. After black responds with rook captures queen, there's no one to guard d7. So white can place his knight there and pick up the queen. After the queens are off the board, white has won a free bishop. Have a look at this position. It's white to play. This time there are two defenders guarding the forking square d6. One is the knight and the other is the bishop. Both these defenders can be captured. But which one should be captured first? Think of it this way. The king should end up in a position where the fork still works. That means just before we move our knight to d6, the king should either be on e8 or f7. Hence white starts the following sequence. Bishop captures bishop. King captures bishop. Bishop captures knight. King captures bishop. And then knight d6 check, poking the king and the rook. This is another similar example. It's white to play. Here the natural looking move for white turns out to serve the purpose of eliminating defenders of the forking square. As of now, f7 is protected twice, so white can't plant his knight there. But after trading queens, white has knight f7 check, winning the exchange. Let's see how this looks. What would black play here? Pause the video and see if you can find the best move order for black. Notice that the black knight has a dangerous fork on e2, but since e2 is guarded twice, it doesn't seem playable. Think of what other squares are protected by these two defenders. The knight defends his rook and e2, and the rook itself defends e2. So if black plays queen captures rook, white must recapture with his knight, after which e2 is loose. So knight e2 check is finally playable and now black is up material. This is a more simplified position. There is only one defender protecting the forking square f7. There is no direct way to capture the rook on f6 to free up f7. Hence the best thing to do is to capture a piece which it protects. This is easily achieved by bishop captures knight. After black recaptures, f7 is loose, so white has knight f7 check, which picks up the queen. From this position, white should have an easy win. This is a position you must have come across lots of times, particularly in the Scandinavian opening. Black has just played knight d4 instead of retreating his bishop. At this point of the game, White captured black's bishop on b4. How can black exploit white's mistake? Pause the video and think of how black can exploit white's mistake. Black simply plays queen captures rook. After queen captures queen, white's c2 pawn is loose. Black plays knight captures c2, poking white's queen and king. You can try this in your own games. It usually works well in blitz games. 
in this position here, the white knight is hanging. What can white do? Right now the knight has no safe squares to run to. So consider knight g6 check. Well, even that is pointless at the moment, with the queen sitting on g7. If you look at black's rook on f8, you'll notice that it's protected twice and attacked twice. But imagine what the board would look like after all the exchanges have been made. Black's king and queen would be susceptible to a knight fork. With these ideas in mind, white triggers the attack as follows. Rook captures rook. Rook captures rook. Rook captures rook. Queen captures rook. And then knight g6 check, winning black's queen. The motif behind this example is that it's possible to distract enemy targets to squares which you want them to go to. Sometimes a knight fork can be used in combination with a mating threat. Here it's white's turn. White's knight would be able to fork black's king and queen if f6 was unprotected. Knight captures g7 doesn't help, so white decides to play rook h6. Now this is a serious threat. White threatens queen h7 checkmate. Hence the g7 pawn is forced to capture white's rook. Now the knight can come in with knight f6 check and win black's queen. 